Uh, you want to get to the main event that really didn't have any heat except with the boys in the locker room and anybody that cares about the wrestling business? What a spectacle this is. And we've pointed out over the last several years about Chris Jericho, the way these feuds have gone where things that should finish the feud happen in the middle of the feud, gimmick matches that make no sense happen. Jericho always comes out on top for no good reason. And this was kind of like the greatest hits of the worst of Chris Jericho all in one match. It only took 15 minutes, but this was 15 of the most embarrassing minutes that pro wrestling has ever seen. Because like you said, they got everything in this one. The match is called barbed wire everywhere. And they had barbed wire around the ring and they had barbed wire tables in the ring and tables with barbed wire outside on the floor and the microphone, the, the public address microphone was wrapped in barbed wire. <laughs> and Jericho comes out with a barbed wire baseball bat and they had barbed wire chairs. And what this proved basically was you got Eddie Kingston, and Chris Jericho with all those implements and it takes 10 minutes to hurt anybody. They're both a bunch of pussies. What the fuck? This and this also, by the way, no DQ, lazy booking, no time limit, blah, blah, blah. And because it's Shark Week, Jericho's minions are going to be hung in a shark cage over the ring. So they're stealing another old wrestling stipulation that actually drew big money when it was done right. So they put Hager and Garcia and Daddy Mac Mac Daddy and Cool Hand Luke in the cage and raise them over the ring. And the first thing I'm thinking is, where's Sammy Guevara? And the announcer said, well, we haven't seen him since he got knocked off the top of the thing or whatever. Well, that's a reason why we'll probably see him in a few minutes. So Ruby Soho, Kingston's lifelong friend and soulmate, has not only the key, but the lifting mechanism to lift the shark cage up and down. So Kingston can get her his revenge for her while she keeps the, the other people at bay. Jericho comes out with that pain maker thing. It was cute in Japan, I guess. God almighty. And immediately they start. Jericho hits or Kingston hits Jericho with the barbed wire microphone. Jericho goes down, goes to his wrist, and it, guys, I'm not lying. Go watch the video. It's not like the Zapruder film. You don't have to analyze this. It's on high-definition television. Jericho goes down, pulls his blade from his wrist, and starts gigging on camera. So the director... Realizing this, cuts to a different camera shot so you can see it better. <laughs> I had a person who shall remain nameless who's been involved in the professional wrestling industry for a number of years contact me and say nobody knows how to fucking blade anymore and Jericho's embarrassing. And I have to agree with that. I can't believe Vince got in touch with you to say that. Well, he was mulling over his retirement. So now Jericho's bleeding, and Kingston gets more barbed wire. They go to the floor, and the, the ring bell was wrapped in barbed wire. Jericho hit Kingston with it. And uh, here came the sign in fluorescent green, Outlaw Mud Show, and boy, it was. And I'm, I'm going to reference an article that our friends at PW Insider did in a minute, but let me finish recapping. Um... So Jericho gave Kingston a Hurricane Rana off the top buckle into a barbed wire board as a break spot. And they go to the break. When they come back, it's a sloppy, phony looking fight. And Kingston's back is all cut up from this ridiculousness. And they're on the apron and they're teasing, taking a bump off the ring onto a barbed wire table. And then Kingston vertical suplexes Jericho off the apron and both go through the barbed wire, and I wrote, this is so embarrassing. Jericho used to be a star. Then here comes Ty Conti to ringside. And old TC gets on Ruby Soho. And then here comes old Anna Jay, who, as we will, call, will, will recall, was friends with old Ty until a couple weeks ago when they turned on each other, had some issue. 
And then Anna J turns back on Ruby Soho and joins up with Ty Conti again. So a lot of these people are very fickle. And so they lower the, sh they beat up Ru Ruby Soho. They lower the shark cage with the heels in it. What? You're forgetting a big part. Well, they've got the key too. By this point, the fans are groaning. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's abominable. This is rotten. And the people are just grumbling, as you mentioned, and groaning while all this is transpiring in front of them. But the best part that really, now they started to giggle. At least they entertained the fans with this because Ty Conti got the key and couldn't unlock the padlock on the shark cage to let the heels out. And she's fiddling and she's fiddling and she's fiddling. And finally, Brian, I know you know because you saw it, but I will surprise the fans listening with the method in which the heels got out of the shark cage. You, you want to tell them or you want me to tell them? Oh, please, you tell them. I'll tell them. They just turn sideways and walk through the bars. I'm not making this up. They locked the heels in a cage so they couldn't interfere in the match, and when the girl was too stupid to turn the key in the padlock and open the door, they just turned sideways and walked through the bars. So now... They all got in the ring and got fake, bad-looking heat on Kingston. But then here came all the baby faces, and you couldn't even tell which. Just now it's 10 or 12 guys fighting at ringside. But they got in, the, in that big brawl, 10 guys, and then, well, you know what they did, Brian. They, they, they fought off. They just fought off. 10 or 12 people are having a fucking wild hay rube all the way around the ring, and suddenly they've disappeared so that Kingston and Jericho can take more bumps into barbed wire. And everybody else disappears. Then Kingston comes at Jericho with a chair wrapped in barbed wire, swings it like Paul Bunyan. Jericho jumps up and gives Kingston a code breaker, <laughs> and Kingston's chair comes down on Jericho's face, and he breaks his own nose. <sighs> then Jericho well, gets just, the chair. Just well, clarify, you're not using hyperbole. He broke his own nose. No, he broke his own nose. His nose is broken. And he's the one that did it. His move to Kingston <laughs> propelled the barbed wire wrapped chair into his own face. And we're not done yet. Because now Jericho gets the chair and hits Kingston with the two fakest, lightest, most obviously worked chair shots in history. Remember when Hulk Hogan did the worst chair shot ever in what, WCW in 1997? This was worse. And then Kingston comes back from being hit with a barbed wire chair, but not hard, and hits his back fist and gets a two count. And then he wraps Jericho up in barbed wire and gets him in a stretch plum. But now here comes Sammy Guevara. And he just jumps in the ring, gets on Kingston. And they're starting to get heat on Kingston again. And there's poor referee Donald Stevens, completely powerless to do anything about this. By the way, did you hear that Aubrey Edwards changed her name to Donald Stevens? Well, that's the name that people are alleging she uses online to have people have content taken down. She's using a fake name, an alias. Yes, yes, with addresses tied to the AEW offices. And uh, apparently she's all elite, though, because one of the uh, signs also was Don Stevens is all elite. <laughs> so then Jericho hits a Judas elbow with barbed wire wrapped around his elbow. And again, that's where my DVR froze because they were so drastically low on time. They weren't trying to run over again. They're just always low on time because they can't manage their time. So I had to watch the clip of the finish on Twitter. And I can't describe to you what they were trying to do because they were going to do a thing where it was Sammy and Jericho were going to hold Kingston, but Kingston was going to do some kind of duck and their shit was going to backfire. 
But by the time they botched it once and then Eddie kind of halfway turned around and shoved somebody, it ended up looking like that Sammy just hauled off and punched Jericho in the face while he was looking at him for no reason. And then Jericho beat Eddie Kingston because there's not going to be anybody that's ever actually going to get over in a program with Jericho. But then Kingston responded by throwing Jericho into a netting or webbing of barbed wire where he could lay there and sell in a spastic fashion. And then they went off the air. Was this... I think because of the timing, this wasn't the worst match ever on AEW. Imagine how much territory that takes in. But because of the timing and what they're doing to themselves, the self-inflicted wounds to their own feet, this could have been the worst thing they ever did. It was embarrassing. It was phony looking. Obviously outlaw. Wrong guy won. All the gimmicks misfired, didn't work. Wouldn't open, whatever the case. The guy broke his own nose. What the fuck else could they have done to in one segment to fuck anything else up? The run that Chris Jericho's on is especially bad. He's had so many bad moments in AEW, so many of the most embarrassing matches and moments he's been right in the middle of, and they've come from his head. But especially lately, Tony has just been letting him run unleashed. And this unleashed Chris Jericho is unwatchable. This was embarrassing. This was bad. It was sloppy. Embarrassing sloppy. Not just regular sloppy. Eddie Kingston has not come out of this feud looking... The feud's not even done! They're not even done with the feud! (laughs) Come out of the feud. They're still in the middle of this! Remember when Kingston could have been the hottest thing in wrestling if they'd have just capitalized on that one article? Speaking of articles, hey, I'm going to close up with this because we've been here for a while and we've still got to get to the Ring of Honor pay-per-view. So I'm going to close up on this sad chapter in American history with this. Dave Shearer at, at PWInsider.com just a couple of days ago, if anybody wants to check it out, find it, wrote an article about AEW and this barbed wire bullshit. And Dave doesn't like blood at all in wrestling. And he said, you know, now with what we know about bloodborne diseases, we shouldn't do it at all. I disagree with him there because you need blood in wrestling because it's violence and it's it's combat. And if it's done right and you can't see through it, then blood is absolutely necessary in certain occasions, but only when people know what they're doing and it's a main match with money drawn talent, then it means something. Elsewise, it's just this indie mark bullshit where they get a kick who look like Britt baker wanted to get juice on tv so uncle dave would give her stars or fucking planets or moons or whatever but dave wrote in this article it's so unnecessary not only to not run fans off who don't want to see this outlaw deathmatch garbage bullshit But it's the stupidest thing they could be doing right now with this timing. The WWE is in more business trouble than they've been in the past 25 years. They're getting bad publicity. The leader has stepped down. There's probably turmoil, you know, on the inside as to who's going to be running what, but they're more vulnerable now than they have ever been before. And in, what, two years or less, these TV rights fees and deals, which has now replaced selling tickets as the biggest revenue stream for a wrestling promotion, WWE is going to be renegotiating all that shit. And it's supposed to be take them even further up the financial ladder. But do the networks want to pay that much money out? Or... Would the networks be looking around for another wrestling promotion that might at least be able to come into the conversation so there's some negotiating on both sides going on? Well, hey, if you don't want to take our offer, then we're going to go over here and talk to this other wrestling promotion that has a bunch of your names, and it's got between a half and a third of your audience, 
and that's before we bring it onto our network and do our promotion, it would be a tactic to negotiate that the TV networks could use. Tony Khan could be involved in those conversations, except for the fact that they're so outlaw garbage wrestling minded to appeal to the small subsection of marks that enjoy that kind of thing and don't give a shit about a professional product and don't give a shit about credible stars and don't give a shit about talented people. They just want to see chaos, blood, and train wrecks. That not only is a limited number that has not grown in three years, Tony. No matter who you add, something's happened to keep them uh, not coming back for more when you add them. But here, that that's the thing is, advertisers and television networks do not want television programs where people are blatantly slicing themselves open with razor blades and the advertisers especially do not want customers that want to watch people do that. They don't want those kind of people. So all somebody has to do from the WWE, if any TV network or broadcasting facility was going to use AEW as an example, well, hey, we could go with these guys. Well, sure, look what they'd show on your television station and show them obvious cutting with razor blades and people rolling around in barbed wire and women bleeding and everybody saying, Moxley, go fuck yourself. And whatever the fuck, everybody's saying shit. It's a clown show. It's amateur. It's unprofessional. And that would sabotage any effort that Tony would make to go anywhere else besides the company that he had the in with through his position with the Jaguars. And that guy has already left TBS. And it's a whole nother hierarchy now with that merger so why do this do you think any aew fan is gonna say god damn it that's it where's my hat give me my hat gomer i'm throwing my hat down i'm never watching this show again because i didn't get to see a barbed wire match with a fucking 50 something year old goddamn midlife crisis wannabe rock star slicing himself open with a fat guy from new york that could get over by talking but he's too fucking wrapped up in his Japanese strong style bullshit to know what his talents are. That's a question that some programming executives might be asking. Do we want to look at this shit? Or do we want to put up with the WWE because at least they give us professionalism? Can you imagine if Frank Sinatra decided to like all of a sudden do Gigi Allen's act? That's what Chris Jericho's doing here. He's trying Thank to be you. something he's not. Thank you. That's a wonderful simile. What? <sighs> you would have thought a guy like that could have taught these guys something about how to be more professional and maybe appeal to a broader audience. Instead, no. because he's got a goddamn crisis going on of whatever, he's dyeing his hair and slicing himself with razor blades, rolling around in barbed wire with his minions locked in a cage that they could get out of if they took a deep breath and held their stomach in. Can you imagine a panic attack you would have had if you were hoisted up in a cage that you could have just slipped right through the middle? Right Fuck, the that was the one good thing about the cages I was in. I couldn't get out of them. I wasn't going to fall out of the fucking thing. <sighs> is, Chris Jer is Chris Jericho, seriously, serious question. Is Chris Jericho the most embarrassing wrestler in the business? Currently, currently, the last few I'm, years, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's a, you know, it's, it's pretty much a, a no contest at this point. Remember what you said about Moxley? I mean, you said about Moxley, you called him the worst wrestler in the world. So you have to take everything into the equation, his position but, on the card, how he's used. Look at Jericho. Who's more embarrassing than Chris Jericho? Well, and that's the thing because Jericho at one point was a star, was a great talent, was really out there performing at a high level, blah, blah, blah. Moxley, I don't think ever has. So it's even worse for Jericho because he was good. He knows how to do this shit. He was good once. But uh, I don't know what has 
entered his mind that he thinks that he needs to do this just to appeal to the younger generation when in actuality he ought to show the younger generation the appeal of quality professional wrestlers of his generation and why that the audience was four or five times bigger when they were all on top. And instead, bleh. He latched on to hold on. He needed something to hold on to. And he found all these young guys. He didn't go there to bring his expertise. He went there to do every dumb thing he's ever wanted to do. Well, I think he's pretty much accomplished that. How much more could be on his list? That's a... I think he's checked everything off. I, he's been pushed off high objects onto crash pads. He's gotten juice on TV several times right out in front of God and everybody. He's... Uh, yeah, I, well, all right. Closing the thoughts people, on the on this match. And the people he talks into doing this stuff with him. The problem is he talks Tony into going along with this stuff, and then he convinces all of these other guys to go along with it too. And I don't know how many of them truly realize how detrimental it is to them when Chris Jericho latches onto you. Because it's a stink you can't get rid of. It's a B.O. you can't get out of your car. <laughs> and MJF's the only one who's successfully gotten away from him and had a fine career since then. And they used Bon Ami. <laughs> there you go. What a nice throwback to the ghost and Mr. Chicken. <laughs> the horribleness and awfulness of it will never actually be forgotten. And that was AEW. Let's see what they do next week. Maybe it'll be a live fucking beheading. That'll, that'll uh, get the networks all fired up to bid for the product. Well, that was that.